Welcome to Analog Comics. Today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite space opera slash military sci-fi comic books. And that is Iron Empires. Iron Empires is the creation of Christopher Muller. And with the creation I'm meaning that he is the writer but he also paints the comic. This is all hand painted stuff so it's really worth waiting until we get to the part where I show you what's inside. But before we take a look inside, there's few things I really need to say about Christopher Muller and his works. To fully understand Iron Empires, you have to know how it started and what's been happening after that. You see, right here, I have two volumes. Iron Empire is called Fate Conquers and Iron Empire She Was War. They are two completely different stories, they are not related, they just happen in the same universe. But this is not the whole story. When Iron Empires originally came out as single issues, it was not called Iron Empires, it was called Shadow Empires. For reasons I, I'm not familiar with, they changed the name later to Iron Empires when it was collected into trade paperbacks. And in 93, Christopher Merler made a short story called The Passage. It's collected here in this um, Dark Horse trade paperback uh, at the end of this Fate Conquer series. After that, The Passage story in 94, he started uh, this Fate Conquer series as single issues. And then in 98, he made uh, She Was War. And both of these story arcs, they were collected into trade paperbacks in 2004. And that's about when I got these. So I've had these about almost 20 years now. And by the way, these are highly re-readable. I have read both of them several times. Actually, one of them is almost coming to pieces. But so they were both collected about 10 years after the single issues into trade paperbacks uh, by Dark Horse and then and now it was called Iron Empires But even that's not all these books. I have here. They're not anymore in print. They're not available But these stories are still available. There's a website called burningwheel.com and It's also called Forged Lord Comics and from that page uh, I think it's run by Christopher Muller by himself and it's located in USA. From that uh, site you can order still these two stories uh, in hardcover and with different covers. I think the covers that he's using now they're not as good as these but it, what it's, what's inside is really what matters. But now there's a third volume out it's called Boyd. So there's a third story in the same universe and it pains me that I don't have it. Uh, I just haven't gotten, gotten around to order it from all the way from USA but uh, he's now offering it through that uh, burningwheel.com site and I think he made it for that site also. But now that void and both of these stories are available so you should check them out and I will put the link down in the description. So now we got that out of the way. I hope that wasn't too complicated. But who is Christopher Muller? I mean, he hand paints these panels. It's very time consuming uh, way to do it, but it also makes the comic look like nothing else. It's anything else. It's, it's his thing. And I found out that he's also done two Justice League stories. I have never read any Justice League story, so I can't comment on that series in, in any way. But anyway, Christopher Muller has done two Justice League stories. One is called Cold Steel and the other one is called A League of One. And though I am not into superheroes a lot, his style is so good. I, I absolutely love it that I am very intrigued to know about these Justice League stories. So if there is anyone who has read them, who owns them, I'd be really happy to hear what you think of them. I'm really thinking of, they might be my first Justice League stories 
because uh, just because of his art. But it's not only his art, just like in Iron Empires, he has also written those stories. So it's all about Christopher Muller again, he alone making everything. And I guess one reason why we don't see him doing more of this is, well, it's a time consuming style he's doing, so he can't pr produce a lot of stuff. So what he's also doing, he's doing illustrations for role-playing games, uh, trading cards, uh, covers and such. And as we're talking about covers, I realized only a few weeks ago, I, I have to admit I'm a bit shame of that, but I only realized only a few weeks ago that Christopher Muller is responsible for some of the my covers that I like the most. And that is Lucifer. I mean, this style, if you look, and this is my favorite of his covers. I actually tried to get this as a big poster once, tried to find if, if it's available. There's uh, Death from the Sandman universe and and Lucifer there. And for this series he has made a lot of covers. There are other people also who made covers for this, but all the best ones, I mean all the best ones are uh, from Christopher Muller. So without knowing I've been kind of double fan for him for some while, but now I've connected the dots. I think that's all the technical details we need and now we can take a look at the comics. Here's the two trade paperbacks I have of Iron Empires. First is Fate Conquerors and the second is Shevos War. And as I mentioned, there is a third one called Void, which I don't own yet and it's on my the most wanted list. It might be actually my the most wanted comic. Both story arcs happen in the same universe and the only thing in common with them is enemy. There's an alien race called the Valen and they usually uh, refer it to as Valen Terror. And although these adventures, they happen in a completely different planets and in a very different cultures, they both are about this Valen Terror coming to their turf. The big picture of Iron Empires is such that humanity has fallen to pieces. It, it used to be vast and powerful, but now it's uh, fallen to these smaller factions and at the same time, right as their neighbor is this alien presence, this Valen terror. And it has been conquering planets, thousands of planets, one by one. And all these stories, they happen in that kind of borderline where humanity comes in contact with the Valen. And though I'm going to show you what's inside, I am not going to show you the Valen, the enemy itself, because it, it's a big thing here. It's actually one of the most disgusting alien life forms I have seen. It's also maybe one of the most simple as an idea, but the way Christopher Muller has depicted it, how he, how he invented how it works. I get goosebumps in this yucky way every time I see uh, in the Fate Congress that uh, how they saw the first victim of this um, Valen and how, how it works. It's really a fate that I wouldn't hope for anyone. And it does give this kind of real terror feeling. It, it's, it's very unpleasant. But the design, as I said, it, it's really simple. But that also makes it a very efficient storytelling tool. Okay, let's quit babbling and take a look inside. Fate Conquerors first. As I mentioned, I have owned these books about 20 years and you can see that this one's already coming to pieces. But it's okay. I've been reading and rereading and rereading them. It's a sign of a good book. I will give you a quick idea how it starts and where it's leading and I will not give you any big spoilers and not show you the end but you, you'll get the idea. So all the panels are hand painted and they give this look that I absolutely love. It, it feels like as if someone has actually done it. Sometimes these new computer graphics and especially the co uh, computer uh, coloring 
is too dead to my eyes and, and this is really good. So what we see here is Trevor Faith's group of soldiers. Trevor Faith is um, a soldier slash priest in, in this some kind of religion and he's on his way to this planet Hotok where these uh, priests are when they hear about him arriving they immediately dislike the idea as they have a good and easy life it's a very corrupted system and they are afraid that this newcomer Trevor Fate might be an ish, uh, problem for them and he is a problem I mean the very second Trevor Faith puts his foot on the ground he takes control complete control and he is un unforgiving relentless and he is very uncompromising in everything well he is like he looks like a really badass but also kind of a priest and so he's driven by this faith inside him like he um, describes that there's he has stepped into this river of fire and all these other people are part of his uh, soldier group and as these soldiers arrive Trevor Fate is taken immediately to the headquarters and he quickly realizes in what state this whole uh, planet and its system is and how corrupt it is and his his contempt is very it's very hard for him to um, hide it and the whole story is written by Christopher Merler too and he is really good at the world building like here uh, Trevor Fate he just takes this um, local army checks uh, them out and what kind of soldiers they are and he tests them with these kind of uh, blast and pistols and at as he's doing that he also mocks these priests with their little guns he's just trying to make assessment what kind of work he has in front of him because he wants to make everybody a better soldier and a better army and and uh, his final thought is that they're garbage but they're all i've got to work with and that, that's that's where the all of this starts and at the same time all of these priests they kind of circle around him, whisper to him all kind of ideas and trying to get bonded and, and make these coalitions with him. But he gives them a very kind middle finger. He doesn't care about anyone's ideas because he has a goal and he knows how, how to reach it. And as I'm turning these pages, I, I have to kind of look forward and jump here and there because I don't want to show you any crucial stuff and these things here the armory they are using they are called irons maybe the iron empire comes from that I don't know but they're pretty cool reminds me of is it uh, Warhammer or something like that I've seen these in some role-playing games that they look just like these but this is also um, military sci-fi, so the action scenes are pretty good using all kind of tech, uh, military tech. And so it makes this interesting in many levels. Okay, I won't show you any more of this in case you want to check it out yourself. And it's really much worth it, I have to say. And at the end of this one is the short story called The Passage. Uh, let's see here. And this one he did in 93 before the Fate Congress. So this was kind of first story with these irons and it's collected here. There, I read that there is one more short story uh, done but it, it has been in some kind of anthology, anthology book and I, I don't have it the second book Iron Empire Sheva's War is about her Ahmi Sheva she is a noble woman on this very distant small planet kind of um, I guess it, it's like a, 
analogy for a small village, but in space. And she is kind of duty bound and married to the ruler of the planet, but she doesn't like to be there. She she has been trained outside the planet in, in much bigger cities and that's the life where she would like to go. If you look at that bright spot here, it's important because in this planet, some of the people have a gift and they call it psychology. And it's some kind of a psychic power and they can uh, affect other people. And within this book, they show some of it, but it also kind of, it leaves it a bit vague what kind of other means there might be. And that's a good thing. It, it just leaves a feeling that there's more out there. But any person with these kind of powers, they have a scar. This is actually a scar on her face. And when she's using those powers, uh, the scar shines. So there are people with different kind of scars on their face. And this is something that has been um, manufactured in, the, in these people's DNA. It's kind of a warning to everyone else that you, among you is now a person who can affect your mind. And, and, and when you see it shining, you know that they're doing it. That, that's the point. The thing about Muller is that he is also not just outstanding a painter, but he's also a very good writer. I mean, these stories, they built the world as this happens. You just get the feeling that there is much more than you can see in the frame, like there's a bigger world out there. And it happens smoothly. Just as you read, you you get to know the, the, the bigger world, the bigger picture. So this is like a really good school of storytelling also. And it tells the story of the world, but it also tells the story of the characters. Like here, Ahmis Shiva and in, in the Fate Congress, Trevor Faith. You are interested of the characters but also the world around them. And he builds all of them at the same time. I think even more here with Shewa, she is even more, she has more depth than faith, uh, Trevor Faith. And so this is highly enjoyable, not just graphically, but also in the sense of storytelling because you want to know what happens to the characters but at the same time you are interested on the big picture the world with the veil and terror that enemy that I'm not going to show you there are these creatures here but I can tell you that they are not the veil and terror they are not the enemy even though there are thousands and thousands of them. That's not even the enemy. I think you can still find some of these second hat as single issues and they were called the Shadow Empires. You might be able to find the trade paperbacks also from uh, Dark Horse. And if you have the means or you're very interested then you can go to Christo Christopher Muller's website and buy all of them with the new hardcovers and, and there is that third story also called Void. Okay that was my quick review of Iron Empires. These books are something that I consider to be part of my old collection. I divide my comic book collection to old part and new part. Maybe one day day I'll explain that but these are definitely the old part almost 20 years old but still very up-to-date and highly enjoyable thank you for watching and see you in the next one bye